Are you tired of playing small and ready to step confidently into your greatness and share your unique brilliance with the world? Well, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I've dedicated nearly two decades to empowering individuals and leaders as they confidently navigate the twists and turns of life and career transitions. If you're seeking direction, connection, or just a little push to play bigger, consider this podcast your VIP pass to a community that genuinely understands your journey. Join me every week for candid conversations and practical guidance designed to help you navigate the challenges of life and business, foster a growth mindset, and cultivate meaningful connections. It's time to embrace your inherent power, define your unique purpose, and prosper in every aspect of your life. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to another episode. I'm your host, Sabine Gideon, and I'm excited to be back here this week with another amazing female powerhouse. For those of you who are new, if you are really completely new to me, I am Sabine Gideon. Not only do am I the host, I also am an author, just recently published Lead Her Ship Reloaded, Reimagining, Redefining, and Rehumanizing Leadership, as well as a professional speaker. So with that, I want to introduce my guest today, and you are going to quickly see why I just had to have her uh, be a guest. So we met through a mutual uh, connection within our network. And within just 10 minutes of her just telling me about her background, I decided she has to be on the show. And this was at the time where I was still formulating the series and she, uh, you'll, you'll hear why. So before I spoil it for everyone, let me introduce Lynn Whitbeck. She is the queen of sales, business owners and entrepreneurs hire Lynn to ignite winning sales because most are chasing down leads lack client retention, conversion, and profit. Lynn is the founder and CEO of Petite to Queen the ho- and host of Claim Your Career Crown on Palucha TV and Get More Client Show streaming on Amazon Fire, Roku, and Apple TV. With that, <laughs> welcome to the show, Lynn. Sabine, I am thrilled to be here and I'm so glad to be back with you. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Yes, agreed, agreed. So you you're you're doing a lot of things, right? And you've done a lot of things. If you could share with us briefly your career journey and some of the some of the significant career moments or milestones uh, that have led you to the space where you're you know now supporting business owners in in getting more clients. Yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, when I started my career, one of the things that occurred after about nine months is I asked uh, to go into outside sales. And uh, the owners of the company um, really were resistant. And I was like, either I'm going to go into outside sales or I'm going to quit, you know. (laughs) And so um, they agreed. And honestly, I could tell they just went, this is going to be a disaster. But they agreed. And I shadowed um, the primary partner for about three weeks. I started my sales career on April 1st. And uh, that year, by the end of the fiscal year, which was December 31st, I had outsold one of the partners. There were two partners. The next year, I outsold the senior partner. I never looked back. And so sales for me was something that I just took to because it's an opportunity to help and serve others. And that is my core value. And it allows you to solve problems, to take things off someone's plate so they don't have to think about it again, and to really be that trusted partner and have a long-term relationship. To this day, I can pick up the phone and call any one of my past clients, even when dinosaurs roamed the earth, and they would be happy to hear from me. So that's the thing about sales is that I love is this opportunity to really take charge and to serve. Now, the other thing is that, as you t- I told you, I asked for the sale. I just went for it. I, I asked to go into outside sales all through my career, then moving up into different positions. I asked to get that next pro project, that next job. At one point, I asked to take over an account when a salesperson had left, which I had never done before, but we had a huge project in. And I knew that if 
anyone, I was the most qualified person to make sure it went without a hitch and that we would retain the client. And I made the case. I got the client. I kept the client. Mm -hmm. So, but once again, I asked, I stepped into my own power when I knew it was the right thing to ask for what I wanted. And that's one thing that I see a lot that women don't want to, don't want to put themselves out there. I mean, and it's like, okay, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? They'll say, no, you might have to push back and insist. Like I did when I first got that opportunity that I created to go into outside sales. Later in my career, I was a VP of national sales and business development. And I was truly being flown all over the world to close multimillion dollar deals. And one of the things that, once again, it was my whole philosophy of, you know, thinking like the client, understanding where they were at, why the solution mattered to them so they can dot, dot, dot. And by doing that, I could really think like them and understand their perspective and then position us as the right fit when it was a win-win, when we were the right fit. It was just a natural and too often people are trying to force you know what they have instead of what someone needs and so that's another thing about when you step into your own power you have the confidence in your own abilities and skills that it's not projecting you onto them instead it's pulling in what's important to them and why it matters what's keeping them up late at night and this doesn't matter if it's your best friend who's going through a personal crisis, helping an aging parent or your clients, all right? It's the same principles. It's about how we treat other human beings. Absolutely. So for those of you who are listening to the show, I, I hope it's become clear <laughs> to you <laughs> as to why I absolutely insisted that Lynn come on the show. And so Lynn, there's there's so many different places that I, I want to go with this and, and really around that internal confidence and that awareness of power. Um, but before we go into that, I, I'm curious, I've been asking all of the guests because as I've shared before, you know, I do believe that it's it's the meaning that we give to words or the meaning that we give to things that really bring it to life in our in our lives. And so, you know, as you think about these three words, power, influence and authority, how do you define them and how do they what are some of the experiences that you've had with each? Power really comes from within. And I, I truly believe it's that where you believe that you are worthy and that you have a right to be at the table and that you look people in the eye, you have an open body language that in your shoulders back, right? That posture also represents your confidence. And that is what power, when you come into a room like that, and then if someone tries to take that power, you take it back, but with grace. So a classic example is that like in a, in a big meeting, I would, there are a lot of men. I worked with a lot of men, right? And I would make a suggestion and it just sort of got passed around or whatever. And then somebody else basically said the same thing. And all of a sudden everybody was like, oh, Bob, what a great idea. And I would say, Bob, thank you so much for agreeing with me. I am really appreciate your support. And this is what I want to add to it from my original suggestion. I took it back. I claimed that power back, but in a graceful, polite, and sometimes a funny way. And when you do that, um, that is another way. It's not being defensive. Oh, wait a minute, Bob, that was my ID. What the heck? No, it's that confidence. Like, I've got this. This is mine. And so that's power. And so then influence. I'm sorry, influence. before you before you go into influence, can you repeat that the response in that scenario? Because I I know people are listening, they might be in their cars, they might be driving, they might be doing things, right? But I want you to hear how she so eloquently took back her power with grace, as she mentions it, in, in a situation that I know every single one of us who are listening have been in. Yeah. So, Bob, thank you so much for agreeing 
with my idea. I really appreciate your support. Now, I want to add the next piece to this, to my suggestion. And then you add the next piece. And so by doing that, you are acknowledging Bob, you're thanking Bob, but you are firmly and um, really articulating that, you know what, this was my idea, guys, and you all know it. Yeah. But with grace. Yeah. And the fact she the fact that she uses the name Bob, which is the name I always use as well. Like, I, <laughs> come on, perfect pairing here. So thank you. Thank you for repeating that. Um, and hopefully you you all are taking notes because I certainly was. Um, so I'm sorry, you you were moving on to influence. You know, I believe that influence is really being your authentic self and coming and approaching people, everyone with compassion, dignity, and respect. And that positions you um, in a way of who you are. And that is that really projects itself into influence that when people know who you are and what you stand for and your values, you know, they know that you're not going to be trying to take advantage of them or you're just after your own agenda, that you're going to listen, actively listen and not interrupt and then give them the opportunity opportunity to really think through when you ask a question so that they can respond that really does project itself into influence so that when you speak people listen because you've established your credibility your your competence you know who you are that that you really truly embrace diverse thinking and other viewpoints and that you want to understand those because when you make that attempt, you'll discover that, okay, I sort of get this and I hadn't considered that. And then they're more, they're much more likely to listen to your twist. So to me, that's influence. That's influence. And people call it a lot of different things, but it is being your authentic self with an open heart and embracing diversity. So that is my feeling for influence. And on authority, authority is one of those things that once again, when you know your stuff and you're not afraid to let people know that you're an expert so that when you're going around the room or somebody has a thing, say, you know, well, that's a really interesting perspective, but you know, this is my take on it. And I'd like to have you consider this alternate viewpoint. It was really interesting. I was on a podcast with this conversation and we were going around with this topic and the way the one person, it was like, okay, I understand what you're saying and why you're saying that, but here's an alternate way to look at it. And so it was interesting. But as we went around at the end, he had, a, he said, yeah, I see what you mean. And I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> it was an interesting um, sort of event, but that is, once again, that ability to ask questions, tell me more, help me understand, so that you can appreciate that that other perspective. But then when you speak, and you speak with care, and use a powerful pause, think about the question or the comment, and also always respond with that grace and without attitude, without being defensive. Um, that really establishes your authority that when you speak, people listen. Like E.F. Hutton. <laughs> <laughs> For those who are old enough to remember that. Um, yeah. Yes. I, and I, I, I love your uh, take or your perception around uh, authority, because oftentimes when we hear the word authority, it's that power over, right? Or the images that we assign to that is power over, or maybe even controlling or dominating in some capacity, right? So, you know, it, and not that those in itself are negative, but somehow the way that they are exercised can be and feel negative. And so when you're looking at it as it's you 
standing in confidence of what you know and what you have to say and being able to communicate it in a way that can be received, that is you exercising authority. Um, and so I, I love I love asking this question to get these different perspectives <laughs> because I think there is an opportunity for us to change the paradigm. And in order for us to fully own who we are and show up authentically, we need to, you know, be in our power. We need to exercise influence. We need to exercise authority because that's how things get done. The question is, how do you identify what that means to you in a way that doesn't make you feel like you have to um, abdicate it or that you have to re relinquish it or that someone has to give you permission to be yeah. powerful or authoritative or influential? So thank you for that. I'm curious, um, and I, I'm, I, I, I know the background, but I'm curious today as it stands, what practices do you have in place to help you maintain your power, to help you stay in that place of confidence and ownership and authenticity? Uh, well, I, I'm going to, there's a trick that I use. Um, when I think that negative Nelly, or in some cases, if, you know, depending on your gender preference, negative Ned is whispering in your ear. We all have self-doubt, things like that. But I will look at something and I will ask, you know, what's the worst case scenario? What's the best case scenario? And what's the most likely scenario? And then I really look at the worst case scenario. Um, and maybe it's like, I'm going to get up on stage and people are going to laugh at me. <laughs> it's like, well, First of all, that's highly unlikely it's going to happen unless I've purposely made a joke and they laugh with me, not at me, right? But it's the type of thing that it's like, well, how would I recover from that? And it's like, well, I'd be okay. You know, I just, you know, I'm sort of like Captain Marvel. I would pick myself up, dust myself off and get back on that rope, right? So um, it's a trick that I use and I find it really important to look at the worst case scenario and really face the fear because that's what it's really about. There's, there's a fear now, and we're human beings. We're literally an, we are an animal and there are reasons that we have fear. It's to protect us. So, I mean, obviously some people have more fear than others, but I, I have fear. Everyone does. But if you look it in the eye and you say, well, okay, I invested in all my business and I end up, you know, losing all this money. Okay, well, I can be a Walmart greeter. I can do that. <laughs> you know, whatever it is, look it in the eye. And if it's something that's like, okay, if this is so far out of my comfort zone, that isn't gonna, I can't, I really can't respond to that. Then I need to modify what I'm doing so that I have that comfort level. Um, you know, and there's all people, lots of people have issues around their money story, right? So anyway, I'm going off on a tangent here, but that's the thing. Look the fear in the eye and really get into why is this fearful for me? I mean, sometimes it can go back to some kind of experience you had as a child. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I do know that I played with dolls. And when I was in junior high, I was still playing with my Barbie dolls. I love my Barbie dolls. And I had someone come over to my house and she saw my whole Barbie doll set up, a huge Barbie doll house, my Barbie doll stuff. The next day at school, everyone was ribbing me that I played with Barbie dolls. And I went, well, that's okay. You know, I really love my Barbie dolls and there's nothing wrong with playing with my Barbie dolls. <laughs> you know, uh, But as the, the week went on, I sort of went, well, let me think about this. Is it time for me to put my Barbie dolls away? And, and then I also talked to my parents about it. And they said, well, this has to be your decision. Don't make this decision based on what other people are trying to get you to do to change your behavior. If you think you're ready to pack up your Barbie dolls, you can do that. You could also pack up part of them. You know, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. And I said, but at the end of the day, this has to be what you want. And this is the greatest thing about my parents. It's your decision. You have the power to decide. And there's not a right or wrong answer. And there's not an all or nothing answer. And so I did pack up part of my Barbie dolls, you know, and, you know, sort of wanted to see how that went. But the idea around that, that everyone has to think about is that there isn't 
always a right or wrong answer, you know? I mean, obviously there are cases where there's right or wrong, you know, but often there, it, there's a lot of gray and it doesn't have to be all or nothing. There's a lot of middle ground. Right. And so two things I want to comment on is that that worst case scenario. And I, I do an exercise with clients, especially when, you know, they're making a leap, whether that's, you know, from their corporate career to entrepreneurship or trying to do something else. Because we know that oftentimes that when we're thinking of the worst case scenario, that's the mind trying to keep us safe. Right. And, and the truth of reality is most people will go down that path of worst case scenario and will convince themselves that that worst case is going to happen. Um, <laughs> I've shared this on the show when I was I was leaving uh, corporate America or when I was feeling the inkling to leave corporate America. I didn't have any clients. It wasn't until I read this book um, on uh, winning clients. I think it's Alan Weiss. And he said, you know, when he was doing it, he him and his wife, they added up all of their assets. So all of the resources, you savings, retirement, credit cards, you name it. And they then determined what their runway was, how many months they had. And I was like, oh, let me do that exercise. And I did that exercise. And it turned out I had a year's worth of, of you know, resources available to me. That was, of course, before I, I knew I was moving to California. But that that's a different story. <laughs> but it was like the minute I looked at the facts, right, or the reality of what was available to me, all of that fear that I had built up, like it just it just went away. It just went away because I was able to counter it with some truth. And then the other thing I, I, I'm going to ask you to dig into this, because this is this between the conversation with Bob and this foundation that you had in your childhood, where you had parents who really taught you how to tap into your power from a very early age by reinforcing the fact that you had to choose. And it's almost like they they taught you by doing in, in action, how to think about things, not from the perspective of someone else or your external environment, but to really go into your own intuition and decide for yourself what you want, which has carried you through your entire career. So I'm just curious, can you, can you, you know, dissect a little bit more about what that what that upbringing was and how it's actually helped you navigate in the space that you are today, because that was not my experience. And I know that hasn't been the experience of a lot of my audience members, but that does not mean that we can't still adopt some of these um, learnings where we are today. Yeah. Well, and, and it was, my parents really believed that um, in that power to um, have open dialogue um, to allow myself and my brother to make decisions. They would give us, you know, their thoughts or their options. I mean, this is a classic. So um, I started high school and my parents said, well, we need to have a talk, you know, and I went, okay. And they said, okay, well, first of all, um, you may want to go to a party and there could be drugs or alcohol. And you know, that's going to be your choice. If you, if you do any of that, this is why we don't think you should. And if you ever want to try marijuana, if you want to drink, just ask, we'll get you it. You can try it here at home where you know that everything's going to be okay. And they said, the other thing is, if you ever do get in that situation, no matter what, you can always call us and we will be there. There is nothing you can do that will ever shake our love for you and that we will be there for you. And so here I am going like, I just stopped paying with dolls a couple of years ago. What the what? And then they said, okay, now the other thing, you may start dating, may start seeing boys. Now here's the other thing about premarital sex. Now this is why we think you should delay. But if you decide you want to pursue this, let us know so that we can take you to the doctor so that you can get things that you need. And I was like going, what the What? But it was like, once again, they, it was, they gave me the power to choose. They told me why they didn't think it was a good idea, but they told me how they would support my decision. And then they reinforced that there's nothing you can ever do that we won't still love you. And so I, I never had a drink in college, never tried to drugs in college. I mean, it was like, why? I mean, if I, my parents from that day forward, when they were making a cocktail, they'd ask me if I wanted one. Or if I want to try it. And I was like, 
occasionally I would try it and it was like, oh, this is so gross, you know, but it was like, why? I mean, my parents are totally, if I want to do that, they're fine with it, you know? And so it was a really great way um, for me um, to know a, that they were going to be there for me. They were going to talk it through, have an open dialogue with me about it. Um, but at the end of the day, they were going to give me their opinion, but I got to choose what I wanted. And once again, that it was like, it, it isn't all or nothing, that there's all kinds of levels. You know, you can go to a party, you can have a drink, but maybe you don't want to drink more than one, you know, that type of thing. And I really appreciated that. That was just the way they did things. and. Um, so, and, and just things that they didn't make a fuss over things that didn't matter. So like when my daughter was in fifth grade, she wanted to dye her hair and I was like, sure, go for it. What, what color do you want it to be? It's just hair. I don't care. Right, <laughs> you know? right. It's like, I'm not going to make an issue out of this. Why? Yeah. You know, it's her ability to be independent and to express herself. Uh, so it is very interesting. And it is that ability of like, you don't have to control someone else. Instead, you're empowering them to be their best version of themselves and that you're leading by example of who you are as a good person. Absolutely. So what I'm hearing is your your parents created a safe space, first of all, right? Because I know oftentimes parents, well-meaning, right, will create a lot of fear. Um, and so they project their fear uh, onto the kids. And so we naturally take that on. But it sounds like they they created more of a space where you were reassured that you were safe, no matter what you were safe, you th they wouldn't abandon you it wouldn't be rejection, <laughs> you wouldn't have those wounds. But also, they started to teach you accountability at a very young age. So and even in them saying, hey, it's your choice, like you get to choose. If you make this decision, they were subconsciously saying like, okay, whatever I do, I own it. I can't turn yeah. around and blame such and such or anything like that, because you already had the wiring that said, whatever I do, it's me choosing to do it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was, and it really, it goes back even further because they would, you know, like, well, I mean, my mother was like, well, you can either buy, you know, this for your clothing, or we can go here. I mean, it's how you want to do it. And I learned sort of, you know, from the time I was in junior high uh, with clothes that I shopped at Jacques Penet and Shea Sears because I could get an entire bag of new clothes rather than one item from Nordstrom. Yeah. And it was like, that was my choice. But I was like, well, I'd rather have like a whole bunch of different outfits, not one. And um, it was it was one of those things that it was like, I could choose. I It's like, well, if I really wanted something with a label on it, but it was like, they just really like, how does, how does that serve you? How is this a value? You know, it was a very interesting thing that, um, you know, we would have these conversations and, um, you know, it would be, it'd be pretty interesting, you know, even like, well, if you decide not to finish your dinner, that's okay, but there will be no ice cream later. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a minor thing, but it's like, that's okay. You don't have to be on the clean plate club. You don't have to finish everything. Um, but you know, but if I was really hungry later, I could still get a bowl of cereal or something, you know? So there was always a little bit of an out yeah. anyway, but all these different ways that they enabled us to make choices from an early age. Um, and you know, and let us choose in all kinds of ways. Um, you know, it really does. It's we all, no matter where your background is, even right now, wherever you're at, you do have the power to make a new choice, you know, and, and that's the thing. We all have that power to make a new choice, no yeah. matter how dark the time might be and what it might look like. Um, when my husband was diagnosed with terminal cancer and yes, I had a, a, a pity party, but I made a choice for that journey with him to be the best it could be. And it was. So I chose a, the path that I wanted to be on. Yeah. 
I love that. Thank you. Um, I will never forget Jacques Penet or Shea Sears. <laughs> my my version of that is calling Target Target. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I love that. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. There is so much, so many questions that I could ask. I, I definitely want to be mindful of time and, and um, get into one more question here before we get into the blitz session. But, you know, again, for those of you who are listening, if, if, if you're still curious as to why I needed to bring her on, th- this is why, because um, I think Lynn is someone who exemplifies um, learning power in a healthy way at a very young age and being able to leverage it, it throughout her career, her adulthood, and then certainly now in the work that she does helping other women and men, um, but mostly women tap into their power. And it, whether it's in the, in the space of, you know, their own business, growing their own business, growing their confidence, um, you know, that's what she helps people do. And so I definitely look forward to having you share more about your services and um, where people can connect with you. But for those of you who are listening, um, whether it's your first time or your, you know, whatever number episode uh, this is, uh, just a couple of reminders on some some resources that I have available to you. So again, my book, Leadership Reloaded, Reimagining, Redefining, and Rehumanizing Leadership is out on Amazon. Be sure to grab your copy. The link is in the, uh, the show notes as well. So with that, Lynn, as we're thinking about either through experience or through others, as we think about the next generation, right, and and really creating a ripple effect that allows more young women um, or girls to start to build these this level of confidence early, to start to build awareness of the power that they have. You know, what are some thoughts that you have in terms of what we can do on a day to day basis, especially those who are in leadership, those who have platforms to help support the next generation? Well, you know, one thing is definitely to give um, our advice to give back in a lot of different ways. There's some great organizations where um, you can either mentor um, younger girls or you can speak at events that support them. and you know, I, you know, really for me, the number one thing is to train young women so that they know they need to ask, because if you don't ask, you don't get, and they need to know that it's okay for them to ask, not only okay, but it's absolutely necessary that they ask for what they want, what they need. That mindset alone of changing that perspective, instead of assuming that people know what you want, like they, they're mind readers, ask for what you want, ask for what you need. And training um, young women to do that is going to radically change how we interact and how we how we live for the next generation. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Ask, ask, and ask again. Uh, no is never final. Uh, that is the belief that I am uh, adopting, that no is not final, similar to failure not being final, um, that it just might mean not right now. Um, so with that, I want to jump into the Blitz session. So we have two minutes, three questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, awesome. So Given what you've experienced, given what you know, uh, based on your experiences, based on your career, based on clients, if you could go back to a younger version of yourself and give her a critical piece of advice, what might that be? Buy Apple stock. (laughs) Sorry, I don't. (laughs) To give myself a piece of advice, um, man, I. You know, I feel like the journey I've lived, it's sometimes you have to take the long road around to travel a short distance. And I'm grateful for where I'm at and the journey I've had, even the rough spots. Ooh, that That's wisdom in itself, right? It's it's the appreciate the journey. If I could summarize what you just said, just appreciate <laughs> the journey. Awesome. And as you think about, you know, looking ahead, right? So when you are looking at, you know, years and years and years and years from now, and you're looking at your life, you know, what do you want that narrative to be? Uh, that I helped and um, a lot of people that I made a difference. Awesome. And then lastly, you know, I, I do believe the leaders are readers. And as you can tell, I love books. 
Um, have there been any books or is there one book that has been pivotal for you in your development, either personal or professional? Uh, well, personal, you know, Pride and Prejudice, um, but uh, professional is Who Moved My Cheese? Uh, because we have to constantly adapt and change and we can't be afraid of that. And we actually have to look for and seek those opportunities of where the cheese is moving and different flavors of cheese. Yes. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> I actually, part of my onboarding for leadership development, like that is the book that I include in my onboarding packet, because I think it's so important that we don't get stuck or we don't get um, complacent in our own growth and our own development and our own way of seeing things. So you're the, you're actually the very first guest that has ever mentioned <laughs> that. Uh, who <laughs> my cheese. It's a, if you've never read it, it's a really, really quick read but it yeah. is super, super insightful um, and will help yeah. challenge you, not just professionally, but anywhere in your life where you're, you know, what is that? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting and it, different results. Yeah. That book will help you see what that actually looks like at play. And there are pictures. So, <laughs> so it's a super copy. quick read. It's a great yeah. book. It is. It is full of wisdom. So with that, Lynn, for those who are listening, who want to connect with you, who want to learn more about you, your shows, everything that you have going on, how can they get in touch with you? Where do you hang out? Uh, I hang out at LinkedIn or you've got my website, Petite to Queen, um, and you can watch my TV show, Get More Clients. Um, it does air live on the Win Win Women Network every Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, but I'm also on Facebook Live at that time with the show. And if you're there and you want to ask me questions after, you know, <laughs> you've got my undivided attention. So um, those are the best places to connect with me. Awesome. Thank you. And I know you have a, a free resource that you share uh, with, with individuals. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yeah. So I have um, a book on sales strategies, and these are really the Fortune 500 sales secrets and there are five core sales strategies that will help you with your, your sales, with your business. And you know, if you're not in sales and you're in some other type of career, you need sales training because you are selling all the time. You're selling your ideas to the board. You're selling your ideas to your team, your, to, to your boss, to your family as to what you're going to watch on Netflix. Sales is one of the most powerful leadership skills and you need to embrace it. Um, so that it will incredibly jumpstart and boost your career. Yeah. Love that. So we will include <laughs> that link, um, all the links, of course, in the show notes, be sure to reach out to Lynn. And with that, we're, we're going to close. I, I pray that, you know, the messages that were shared today resonate with you. Of course, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have ahas, feel free to reach out to me. With that, we'll be back next week with another amazing female powerhouse. Lynn, thank you so much you. for sharing your wisdom and being on the show and uh, reflecting back to us what's possible. Thank you. It was such a pleasure. Same here. Have a great rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you found today's conversation helpful or got a piece of insight that you plan to implement in your life, I'd love to hear from you. Connect with me on LinkedIn at Sabine Gideon and send me a message or feel free to leave a review on either Apple or Spotify. I also invite you to share this episode with anyone in your network, another powerhouse possibly, who you think might benefit from today's conversation. Lastly, as always, any links, any resources, or any upcoming training is included in the show notes. So be sure to check that before you leave today. Until we chat again, have a blessed and powerful week.